Welcome to a journey through a classic TV series from the 70s that's etched in television history. Prepare to dive into a world filled with laughter, surprises, and touching moments. This show revolves around the lives of three roommates, each bringing their own quirks and charms to the mix. Their adventures unfold with humor and heart, tackling important issues of the time with a clever touch. As we reminisce about this beloved sitcom, we invite you to share your own memories and experiences inspired by the show. So grab your snacks and let's embark on this nostalgic trip together. This sitcom, known for its lighthearted premise, revolves around a man living with two female roommates. Despite the titillating setup, the relationships remain platonic, portraying them as a de facto family who stick together through thick and thin. John Ritter shines as Jack Tripper, a chef whose physical comedy and expressive antics drive much of the humor. His comedic genius is reminiscent of legends like Dick Van Dyke. Alongside him are Joyce Dewitt as Janet, the girl next door type, and Susan Summers as Chrissy, the naive blonde. The show's comedic style leans heavily on farce, delivering mostly lighthearted and antic moments. Despite its enduring humor, the series occasionally stumbles, particularly in its portrayal of the trio's landlords, the Ropers. The dynamic between the wife's constant nagging and the husband's creepy grins sometimes veers into more melancholic territory than intended. Nevertheless, the show maintains its charm through numerous cast changes, consistently delivering funny and enjoyable episodes. While some viewers find the show's fluctuating pace and comedic success to be hit or miss, it remains a staple of television entertainment. Jack, in particular, stands out as a favorite character, drawing viewers even when the show's pace lags. The inclusion of two blondes throughout the series, alongside the consistent presence of a brunette, raises questions for some viewers, but the characters' enduring qualities keep them engaged. Comparisons to other sitcoms like Friends highlight Three's Company's unique brand of humor, with John Ritter's endearing goofiness serving as a standout feature. Despite occasional casting missteps, such as Jenilee Harrison's portrayal of Cindy, the show remains a beloved classic. In conclusion, Three's Company is a genuinely funny sitcom that has left a lasting impression on audiences, thanks to its memorable characters and timeless humor. Incorporated into the syndication package of the show are two episodes from The Ropers. One features The Ropers pilot, while the other includes guest appearances from John Ritter, Joyce DeWitt, and Suzanne Summers. Notable in several scenes is a painting titled Peaceable Kingdom by American artist Edward Hicks, positioned to the left of the screen near the bathroom door. John Ritter portrayed a character pretending to be gay on the show. Interestingly, in Dangerous Perceptions, his son, Jason Ritter, portrayed a gay man pretending to be straight. In the world of television, Three's company unfolded with a cast that underwent changes, yet John Ritter and Joyce DeWitt remained steadfast throughout the series. The apartment setting, a crucial backdrop for the trio's comedic escapades, had an interesting ownership dynamic. Mr. Furley's older brother, Bart, owned the apartment, holding power over Mr. Furley due to past childhood bullying. Despite being gruff and intimidating, Bart's dominance over his brother became evident when he was portrayed by the diminutive Hamilton camp in season 5, standing at a mere 5 feet 2 inches. As the series approached its conclusion, a spin-off titled Three's A Crowd was discreetly planned. However, tension surfaced when Joyce DeWitt unintentionally discovered auditions for a new character, Vicky. This revelation fueled disappointment among the cast, particularly John Ritter, as they realized the series would essentially continue without them. In the realm of sitcom history, the dynamics of ownership, power play, and unforeseen spin-offs added layers to the straightforward humor of Three's company. The journey unfolded with its ups and downs, leaving an imprint on television history. In the TV series, one notable aspect is how Joyce DeWitt consistently wore pantyhose or tights during the filming. This caused tension with producers, yet it led to her becoming the spokesperson for LA's pantyhose. Numerous guest actors, including Jeffrey Tambor, took on multiple roles. Tambor appeared in both Three's Company and The Ropers as different characters, holding the record with three roles. Throughout the series, Ralph Furley's brother Bart was mentioned frequently, but only appeared in one episode. In filming, the exterior shots of the Roper's apartment were captured at an actual corner apartment house in Santa Monica, with the owners granting permission for filming rights. The original UK version, known as Man About the House, was later adapted into Three's Company in the USA. Thames Television's George and Mildred inspired the landlord spin-off The Ropers, while another UK spin-off centered on Robin running a restaurant called Robin's Nest, which became the US series Three's A Crowd. Norman Fell, and Audra Lindley returned to the series after their spinoff, The Ropers, was cancelled. 
This marks Suzanne Summers' absence from the series after her departure. In the final episode, he moved from the apartment to one above his restaurant to live with his girlfriend Vicky. She got married and left to live with her husband Philip, and she took a nursing job in Hawaii. Before landing the role on the show, she had been a Kellogg's Corn Flakes box model and Miss Young America. After not speaking to each other for 30 years, she and Susan Summers reunited for a YouTube video event. When discussing her firing, both actors put much of the blame on the sexism of Mickey Ross and other show producers. They could not appreciate the feminine contribution, she said. Pigs, she said later in the interview. In other interviews, both she and Priscilla Barnes called the producers abusive. It was one of the worst experiences of my life, she would say of working with TTC Productions. In a book detailing the drama behind the scenes, an incident occurred in late 1977 at the ABC Studios lot. Cindy Williams and Penny Marshall playfully joked with John Ritter, mimicking Suzanne Somers. Ritter responded, questioning if that was the essence of the show. Suzanne Somers, admitting her political stance, identifies as a centrist libertarian or moderate Republican. Jordan Charney, known for his role as Jack's boss, portrayed Larry's boss in one episode. He featured in Jack Moves Out from Season 3. In the series, Cindy, portrayed by Jenny Lee Harrison, made brief appearances from the opening to the end of the show's syndicated version. She's seen alongside the main cast as they enter the zoo. Despite being well-liked by colleagues, her lack of experience, and a decline in ratings prompted the search for a replacement roommate. Suzanne Summers, who was part of the original cast, reunited with her former co-star Joyce DeWitt on Summers online talk show Breaking Through. This marked the first interaction between the two since Summers' departure from the show in 1981 due to salary negotiations. Jack initially resided at the YMCA before sharing an apartment with Janet and Chrissy. Alan Hamill proposed bringing back Suzanne Summers to reprise her role as Chrissy Snow for the final season as a love interest for Jack, but the idea fell through. During Summers' contract dispute in 1980, she demanded $150,000 per episode plus 10% ownership in the series, claiming it was equivalent to John Ritter's earnings. However, Ritter was earning $50,000 per episode and had no ownership. Ritter received a significant raise in ownership when he starred in the spin-off series Three's a Crowd, which didn't feature Summers or DeWitt. 